Some five years ago, I brought a message entitled today the same thing. Uh, I entitled the message, Albert is not coming out. Now, this man in the Bible was, wasn't named that I want to speak about. He called the man from Mount Ephraim and also called the Levite of the tribe of Levi. But I've hung on him a name. Elbert. El Elohim means God. But God gives us a story of this man. There was a woman and is a woman who's on national television, talk show, very popular, named Ellen. Some five, six years ago, she came out and testified that she was a deviant against nature. Also, Meredith Baxter did the same thing, who also is a similar called Family Ties. But folk, I see too much of this happening, transpiring, taking place now. And we've got to be mindful of what the Lord teaches and how severe that it is. But in our story, we're going to read in a moment. The scripture tells us in the 19th chapter of Judges, verse 1, about this man from Mount Ephraim that went and took himself a concubine from Bethlehem, Judah, which was a ways off. In those days, they walked wherever they went. They didn't have any other options other than maybe a donkey or a horse or some animal. But it was quite a tr distance from one place to the other. But the scripture says that he took him a concubine and the next verse down says she played the whore against him. Meant she was unfaithful to him. So she left and went back to her daddy's house. Was gone there for four months. He said, well, I need to go get her. Forgive her. And take her back. So he went and visited his father-in-law's house. And boy, they welcomed him in. Because he knew he'd come to get his daughter and take her back as his concubine. A concubine was a secondary wife. But he goes over and visited with his dad, her dad. He intended to make a quick trip, but the, his dad just, uh, her dad was glad to see him, welcomed it in, his son-in-law. He said, just come on, stay. Uh, the guy got up to leave. He said, no, wait a minute. You can't eat before you eat. We got it. You got to eat. And he drug it on, drug it on for five days. He kept putting him off. And on the fifth day, they got up, mate, but he said it, it was getting late. And the man said, just, just stay on over till tomorrow and you get an early rise, start in the morning. We've got a long way to go. But he tarried. In traveling those days, uh, there were some wicked places. Uh, and I liken it to if you, if any of y'all don't take this personally, but I'd like it to North Houston. Sister Millie grew up in North Houston, and she knows how dangerous. What matter of fact, we had one of our churches that flat went out of business because of the where its location is. Dangerous place to be. Anyway, they they left, headed back to Mount Ephraim. And they knew that darkness was, darkness was going to catch them. 
because they were going to have to spend the night on the road. And the places, the options they had was not good. They said, we'll go to either Ramallah or Gabia. And they chose to go into Gabia. No place to stay. They're on the street. An old man came out of the field and he said, Folk, you don't know this place. I live here. It's not safe to be on the street. So you come in and I've got everything for your animals and everything that you need. Just come on and you're welcome here. Now text takes place while they're having supper. I call it supper. They were having a they were eating and they were celebrating, having a good time when they hear a Let's see what happens. Verse 22 says, now listen. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, homosexuals, beset the house round about, and they beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. The Bible says Adam knew Eve and they had a child. And this is the kind of knowing they were talking about. They were wanting to have a sexual relationship with this man. Verse 23 says, And the old man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to my house, he's my guest. Do not this folly. Leave him alone. And he said, the man offered an option, the old man did. He, Behold, here's my daughter, a maiden, and this man's concubine. I bring them out now, and humble ye them, and do with them, what seemeth good unto you? But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine, and he brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and they abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. They sexually abused her all night. Verse 26. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her, or her husband was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning, opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold and he said unto her up and let's be going but none answered then the man took her up on an ass the man rose up and he got himself unto his place he took her body unto his home Now, I mentioned a moment ago about Elbert, why well, I named him such. And the fact that Ellen made such a to-do of it that she was that fashion of life or that pride of life. And people are okay and in sanction of that wherever you go. Most people say, preacher, don't say anything about that because I've got a cousin or an aunt or an uncle, a son or a daughter, somebody that's turned that way. Folks, it don't matter if I was turned that way. It don't make it right. right. It corrupts the generation. If you look at what happened to Abraham and Lot and what, what God had to do to Sodom and Gomorrah, he had to burn them up, didn't he? Because they took over. 
But much of the nation applauded this Ellen when she so-called came out. But our text speaks of a sad time in the history of God's people, the nation of Israel. They had disregarded, or should I say discarded, God. Completely disregarded what he had to say. They were doing what was right in their own eyes. If you would, look down to Romans 1 now. Romans 1. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to the corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore... God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. They worshiped the human body more than they did God who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, Disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but they have pleasure, pleasure in them that do them. Man doing that which was right in his own eyes. Now, I've got to tell you what right in man's eyes doesn't make it right. If it's against God's will and God's teaching, it's wrong. But I've never heard of so much in my life of so-called transgender. I watched a deal on the, uh, Facebook day or two ago, happening up in Iowa, where high school students, the girls, were real upset, and I don't blame them, because the boys were using the girls' restroom. Because they felt like a girl. Can you believe that stuff? Boy, the devil really sold the job, didn't he? They want to be accepted because it's right in their eyes, not God's eyes. Homosexuality took over in the little town of Gabeah that I read to you about. It was rampant. They came to this old man's house and they said, we want that man that we saw come in here today in your house. The man said, well, I'll just bark him. The dog said, you can take my daughter or you can take his concubine, but you've got to leave this man alone. Albert's not coming out. At least he had guts enough to say that. But he said, here's my daughter. He knew how wicked they were, and he might, might, they might just kill him if he didn't have a counteroffer. offer. 
It took some drastic action on the part of Israel. The old man, after he wept over his concubine, if you read on further when you get a change, and I'm going to tell you what it says now in the 19th chapter of Judges. He took his concubine's wife or his concubine's body and he cut her body into 12 pieces. They didn't have Amazon either to deliver, but they had a delivery. They carried part of her body to all of Israel. And when that package came, everybody said, what meaneth this? We've never, that's part of a human body. Here it is. The old man did that. The man did that to uh, get their attention. This was my concubine's body. And these wicked men of Gabeah have killed her. They raped her all night and she's dead. Y'all need to know how wicked that things are in our nation, they were, she, this man was saying. Now don't you know that man's heart was broke when he had to take a knife and literally separate her parts of her body and send it throughout all the coast of Israel to get their attention. And brother, when they took counsel together and, and the man told them what they had done to his wife and how wicked that it was in, in Gabeah, Israel said, we'll not sit down till we do something about this situation. We'll take those men of Gabil that's responsible for killing this woman and we'll take care of them. Buddy, it started a war. And you read on and on a couple of chapters there where over 100,000 people died because of this incident. Over 100,000 people on both sides. Matter of fact, they said they want enough men that's going to wipe out the tribe of Benjamin of which Gabeah was of the uh, tribe of Benjamin. And they said, we've got to do something and you'll find that later on they had to send some of their daughters of the other tribes of Israel to intermarry with the tribe of Benjamin so Benjamin wouldn't be obsolete. But it all started over this situation with this man. God used this measure to clean up the nation of Israel. Now in Sodom and Gomorrah's case, it went too far and God had to step in and he took care of it. He burnt them up. Y'all know the story. But Satan wants us to ignore sin. If a murderer came to us and said, I want the world to accept me. I'm a murderer. I'm a practicing murderer. Would y'all buy that? You wouldn't want him as your neighbor, would you? What if he said, I'm a practicing thief? <laughs> you don't want him living next door. But basically, that's what a homosexual is. He said, I'm a practicing and I want you to accept it. I don't care what God has to say about it. That's what their sentiment is. And folk, this is from God's word, not mine. God gives us a story of this man and how wicked that things were in Gabeah. And what he himself, they took counsel before they started the war and killed that 100,000. They went to God and asked, and he said, go ahead and take care of business and I'll be with you. And over 100,000 people died.
What if a child molester said, I'm a practicing child molester, but I want y'all to accept me? What would you do? Get them out of my way. Leave them away from my grandkids. But that's what basically somebody that lifestyle stay in. All right. God, the good news. God still loves sinners. What did he do to Sodom? If you will, look at the last verse on your page. God delivered just Lot, who was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. He had all he could take. He was vexed with their lifestyle. But God saved him, didn't he? Oh, God still saves a sinner. Paul was writing to the Ephesians and he, he spoke of that lifestyle, of that deviant lifestyle. He said, and such were, past tense, some of you. In other words, the Lord still saved that person, but when they get to be a reprobate, they're in trouble. God gives up on them. And folk, if God gives up on you, you're in trouble. But God will still save sinners. We need to be like the old man who said to those wicked sodomites, Albert's not coming out. Leave him alone. He's a man and you're men. Folk, that's why it's so ludicrous. Nature itself testifies that it's wrong. We need to not give an approval. Brother Enrique sent me a deal the other day of a pastor preaching and he said he had open doors for those people of that lifestyle open doors is that what he said brother Ricky come on in you leave my kids alone I tell you that much it's sad the day we're living in, but everybody said, Preacher, be careful what you say. I am careful. Amen. Folk, God condemned it. Not me. What I say doesn't really matter because he's the author of life. He's the one that put you here and me. Gave us all a certain amount of time, a allotted amount of time, that we're going to get to stay here. But he's made a better place for us, hadn't he? Have nothing to do with that wickedness. God called us as a church to warn the wicked of their way and to proclaim the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, he also told us, and I don't want you to forget it, when they were talking about the Lord's day and when his return will come, Jesus said himself, even as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. Oh, I think things are shaping up. If y'all were in Sunday school this morning, your brother and Ricky point out that a number of things that would happen precede the coming, and they have to happen. The Lord said, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, 
that that day would not come except that what come a falling away first and the man of sin, the Antichrist, be revealed. All these things are shaping up to happen. Just get ready for that happening. In that day, the Lord's going to come. Folk, the Lord gave us this story. It's in his book, not mine. But I happen to believe that his book is greater than anyone else's. Amen. It's a book of truth. So if you're here this morning and you haven't made your heart right with the Lord, I tell you that there's no better time, no better place than right here and right now to make your peace with God. Right where you are, you simply say, God, I know I'm a sinner and I'm trusting your son, his blood, to cover my sins. Oh, if you believe in your heart that fact, you'll be saved. So as I... For your attention this morning, folks, oh, what I said this morning, not to offend you, but if the Lord's word offend you, you turn it over to him. I can't apologize for what God said. He knows the truth. God will still save a person unless they be reprobate. The Bible tells us it comes to a point where God actually gives up on an individual. And they may hasten again to say, if God gives up, you're in big trouble. All right.